Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Today we're playing Fable 3, and we're going to be talking about the upcoming Fable game. Before we start, guys, as you can see, I am like a couple subscribers away from 1 million subscribers. So if you guys could subscribe and help me reach that goal, just push it over the edge. There's only a little bit to go. I'd really appreciate that. I have a list of questions that I kind of want to talk about today and things that we don't really know much about at this point. And I kind of want to just jot down why they're important and what I hope to see from the newest Fable game in regards to these questions. So let's start with the main one. There's no point wasting any time. Character customization. Throughout all the marketing of Fable, we've seen one character, one hero we get to play as. And personally, I'm not a big fan of them. For no particular reason, it's just not the hero I would personally design. For one, I've always played as a guy in Fable. And obviously with this being a new Fable game, I was kind of hoping to keep that tradition. So, I don't even know if I can play as a guy yet, which again, it's no biggie, I'm not going to pretend it's the biggest deal in the world, but I would kind of like to keep playing as a guy as I have in the other games. But on top of that, we've seen no real in-depth customization. we have not even seen many outfits, or many hairstyles, or tattoos, so all these different customization parts, we are yet to see any news from. I mean, hell, at this point, we haven't even seen any armor types. Now, I'm very aware it's early days, but look at Fable 2, look at even Fable 3 and Fable 1. I know it's very early days, but look at, just look at what's on screen right now. Fable is known for its goofy and outlandish outfits and very odd missions, apparently. Fable has always just had some of the coolest character design when it comes to being Master Chief in Fable 2, or having this really cool obsidian looking armor, or just wearing some basic assassin's gear. Or maybe you're just a giant chicken running around Bowerstone. The point is, all these things kind of make Fable what it is, and I don't think it will be the same without being able to have this in-depth level of customization. Now again, I want to preface this by saying it is early days, and I'm sure that in the upcoming months we will get to see a little customization, but the main question on my mind is, do we have to play as the pro tag in question, the one we've seen so far? And at this point, we've seen nothing to prove otherwise. Which I'll admit is a little bit of a red flag. I want to play as my hero. It, Fable has always been about telling people your story. Taking your story somewhere. Being your own hero. And the fact that so far they've not really shown much of that off. It worries me a little. On to something a bit less deep. And something that we kind of got hinted at in the last trailer. Which is pretty exciting. I want to know about who that evil person at the end of the trailer was. Who is the big bad boss in this game? Obviously, in Fable 2, you had Lord Lucian. In Fable 1, it was Jack of Blades. Um, and in Fable 3, it's Logan slash that weird darkness thing. Either way, they had some of the coolest bosses and enemies to fight. And I loved it. So I'm really excited to see what Fable 4, the reboot, whatever you want to call it, has in store for us. Another question I have is, what is the state of the guild? Now, this one's been hinted at a little bit more. Obviously, they talked about in some of the trailers, the age of heroes is over and stuff. And what I want to know, does that mean that the Heroes Guild is completely deformed again? And we're starting the to Heroes Guild this time. Obviously, in Fable 1, the Heroes Guild was alive and well. In Fable 2, not so much. In Fable 3, it was barely even mentioned. So I want to know about how the prevalence of the Hero Guild is going to be. If there even is a Heroes Guild. Remember, this is a new dev team in a new universe. And this kind of brings me on to my next big question. Is this based on the old Albion, or is this a completely new Albion? Uh, and by this I mean, are we going to be getting places like Bowerstone, Westcliff, stuff like that? I mean, obviously I'm not expecting it to just be Fable 2 Remastered. I'd be sad if it was, mainly because I'm holding out for a Fable 2 Remastered. But, you know, what I want to know is, is this the Albion we've explored before, or is this just a place called Albion with different locations inside that are new and fresh to the player? I'm not opposed to either direction in this, but it's just something I want to know. Something else I want to know is, is Teresa coming back? This is a big one to me because I feel like Teresa is the biggest unsolved mystery in the Fable universe. Now, I understand that that is on Lionhead. At the end of the day, Lionhead got shut down, so they couldn't really tell us the ending of the Teresa story. I always had the feeling that Teresa was the real enemy pulling the strings behind the scenes for their own personal benefits, and I really wanted them to explore that maybe in a Fable 4, but obviously that's not going to happen. But now we have the Fable reboot, is this something they're going to try and clean up on their own end, or is that whole storyline just completely abandoned? This again, kind of tying into the Bowerstone slash Albion question, are we going to be getting Aurora coming back? Aurora obviously is the really cool Deserty location set in Fable 3. It's one of my favourite locations in Fable history. I think it's really cool, really unique. And I think that honestly, that area in Fable 3 is one of the coolest places I've ever seen in a game. So 
I'm obviously very pro it coming back. I think it's a really cool idea to have not just Albion, but different areas. Or maybe it is an Albion, I can't fully remember. Okay, on to some sort of less deep and, like, really speculatory questions. I want to talk more about gameplay features now. Is the landlord system coming back, where I can kind of buy and rent properties? That was one of my favorite things about Fable 2 and 3. That was how I made a majority of my income. So, I really want that to come back, personally. Again, I'm willing to compromise. These aren't all things where, like, I need them to be perfect. If they don't want to bring something back, I'm okay with it. This is Playground's game, not Lionhead's. I'm not expecting this to be Fable 4, which is just the next continuation in a pre-built series. This is a reboot starting from scratch. So, if they want to redo systems and make things completely different in some areas, I'm okay with it. So, like, again, when I talk about these things about is it coming back, is it not? It's not like, a, oh, it's not coming back, it's negative. It's more so, like, I just want to know where this game lands in these certain areas. So, like, yeah, for me, I would like the landlord system to come back. If it doesn't, though, that's cool. I'm interested to see how else they want us to make money. Another thing that's kind of on my mind is we haven't seen a great deal of the good versus evil. I think we got a hint of it in the last trailer. They kind of showed, obviously, um, the main character getting a negative and a positive reaction from someone. And to me, I took that as them hinting that a reputation and a good versus evil system is going to be in place. But to what degree? Are we going to be having physical changes like Fable 1, 2, and 3, where if you were evil, your character looks visibly evil? And if you're a good guy, is your character going to look visibly good? These are things that, again, are kind of the Fable DNA, so I'm interested to see if we are going to be getting that back, or they're taking a different approach this time around. Another one is family systems. Um, in Fable 2 specifically, I loved having a family. I had a family in different cities, man. I was evil. Either way, though, I always thought it was a really cool system, and obviously when the big plot happens in Fable 2, and you kind of... um have your family deleted it genuinely was like a gut punch and that was kind of an indication of back then how much i really did care about them so it's a thing where it's like again if it doesn't come back i'll be a bit sad but i would like to see how they take it too but for me personally this is one of those things i really want to come back um and i think i would be in this regard a little disappointed if it doesn't return looking in the trailer we got a glimpse at a bit of ranged combat and i can't lie one thing I took from that was it looked almost a little bit, uh, how do I put this, stiff. It didn't look as free-flowing as Fable. Like, even in Fable 3, you can see how, like, fluid this combat looks, and then you can switch to your pistol at will, and, like, shoot if you want, then you can use your will whenever you need to, back to the pistol. And stuff like that made the game really fluid to play. It never felt outdated, even though, by today's standards, you could argue the combat is incredibly outdated. So again, I'm just wondering what sort of combat style they're going to be going for here. Are they going for a more tactical and calculated approach with Fable's combat? Or are they going for the loosey-goosey free-flowing that we kind of know and love? Another thing on my mind, and obviously I know this is very early days to be asking these questions, but I want to know how DLC is going to be handled. I swear to God, if there's like a Fable Battle Pass, there will be some atrocities happening in the name of Fable. I'm kidding, of course, but I want to know, like, how are they actually going to monetize the game? Because I imagine they will. It's modern gaming. Are we going to be getting set DLCs? I'm obviously very pro for that to return. Um, I always liked the DLCs in Fable games. I actually think they were really solid for the most part. Or is it going to be, like, a free content system where, like, we kind of just every now and then get an update of a couple quests and stuff? The last thing I want is Fable to go live service for very obvious reasons, but if they're going to add content for free... I'm not going to be the one to complain about that. Free content is free content. I also wonder, are we going to be getting a dog this time around? We haven't seen anything in any of the marketing, which leads me to think no, to be honest. I'm kind of airing more on the side of no. Um, I feel like at this point, we would have seen the hero with the dog at some point. Obviously, the dog was quite a big part of the marketing with games like Fable 2. So I'm kind of thinking we won't. But again, it's something that's kind of lingering at the back of my mind. And the main question in my mind personally, and this is where I'm going to have a bit of a hot take. So like, again, feel free to disagree with me and let me know what you think of this idea down below, because I'm not saying this is going to be for everyone, but how are they going to do the reboot style? And by this, I mean, if we were to take a game like Modern Warfare, which was a soft reboot, which kind of, at least for the first game, played into the other game's story. They kind of wrote the game in a way that you could fit it into the universe of the old games and it would still make sense. Or is this going to be a game that completely disregards the old game's lore and goes for its own thing? 
again, this is not a case of me being like, oh god, they better write the old law in, or oh god, I want it to be no law related. I'm chill either way, but I'm just really wondering what route they're going to take in this regard, because obviously the law of fable is not only very old at this point, but something that I know relatively well, so if they are going to honor the law, I'd be a little bit worried that they may mess up some bits, but of course, it still would be quite nice to see them actually take the old lore of the games into consideration. But then again, I'm also just excited to see what they can do. I don't need them to kind of please me in this regard. If they want to just take it in a new direction and experiment, I'm so for it. And honestly, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Anyways, though, I feel like that's enough of my questions before I go on like a massive rant about how I want everything to be in Fable. I don't want to bore you guys for too long. So thanks for watching this video. If you're new around here, I'm going to be posting a ton of Fable. It's my most anticipated game like ever. So if you want to stick around and see some more Fable content, please let me know. I'd appreciate that.